This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, fiery scenes at Dunedin's Town Hall as climate protesters block delegates entering the Minerals Forum Conference. The Women's Health Bus holds its first clinic in Cromwell after years of planning and fundraising. And also in central Otago, a Dunedin filmmaker is using the Blue Lake at St. Bathans as the setting for her latest project. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Simon Anderson. Fiery scenes erupted outside the Dunedin Town Hall this morning as climate action protesters blockaded entrances and jostled to prevent delegates from entering the Minerals Forum Conference. Three people have been arrested and a woman is in hospital after police officers tried and failed to remove protesters who linked arms to prevent access to the venue. Heated confrontations outside Dunedin Town Hall this morning as climate action protesters blockaded entrances and tried to prevent delegates entering the Minerals Forum Conference. Police tried to pull protesters away from the doors. Deborah Robb had her glasses broken during the incident. Are these your glasses? Yeah. How did that happen? Was it the police? Uh, they were because trampled. my head got so squashed, my glasses just got pushed off, and I was trying to pick them up, but there was just feet everywhere. Has anything like this happened to you before? No. At a protest? Protesters linked arms and sang protest chants outside the Harrop Street entrance to the Glenroy Auditorium. A woman was injured as police made attempts to break through the protesters' blockade. She was carried to safety by police after suffering apparent leg injuries. People's shirts have been ripped off, one of our friend's chest has been um, damaged and someone's just been sent to hospital um, for a broken, potentially broken knee. Police officers also lost their footing in the scrum and had to be helped to their feet by other officers. Three people were arrested and released without charge. Well, we've had people as old as 85 to younger kids come and join us. Um, I'm disappointed with the police, the way they behaved, and I'm disappointed with Red Badge, and I'm disappointed with the lack of engagement from delegates. They don't want to speak to us. Um, we had one of them tell us that climate change isn't real. The three-day forum is being attended by representatives of the country's largest mining companies. A reporter inside the conference says it appeared most delegates had made it inside by 10.30, many using side doors. Protesters say they want to disrupt the conference as a message to the government and business owners. They won't tolerate them extracting any more coal. There's all these mining communities and the research has shown they're the ones with the lowest rates of employment and poverty and the coal isn't good for them, it doesn't make a prosperous New Zealand and it contributes to 46% of CO2 emissions. It's the single largest contributor to human-induced climate change. She says they've certainly made themselves heard today but may be back tomorrow. The conference winds up on Thursday in Dunedin, the South today. A gas explosion at a Queenstown hotel this morning was large enough to blow out a window. One person was being checked by an ambulance crew as a precaution after an explosion in the kitchen of the Sherwood. Emergency services say the explosion didn't cause a fire, but it did blow out a window. No further details around the course of the explosion or the extent of any damage are available, but a fire investigator has been called in to find out what happened. A women's health bus has, been, has held its first clinic in Cromwell after nearly two years of planning, designing and fundraising. Organisers say they're delighted the service is finally up and running. Its co-founders, Dr. Helen Peterson and practice nurse Alice Van Ziel, both of Cromwell, are delighted. Doctors on the move. The new woman's health bus in the south has all you need from a professional clinic in a mobile and compact space. Co-founder Dr. Helen Patterson says she sold her flat to provide a $270,000 loan for the non-profit service. We've had lots of support in terms of from some people giving us uh, smaller donations which we've purchased some equipment with but we're still looking to try and get some uh, more equipment so we can provide more service on the bus. The Women's Health Bus Clinic is designed to provide health services for people living in rural areas throughout Otago and Southland as they often have to drive long distances to get to appointments. Last night I went up to Terrace to talk to the Terrace at a, um, Rural Women and try and get some ideas from people uh, to say where should we be going and what should 
should we be doing? They also want to use the clinic as training for health professionals and a charity in the same vein is also in the works. I'm talking to people about that at the moment as to I want, would want that to be community led rather than being led by the bus. Um, uh, but, uh, but we're a non-profit making social enterprise company. Oamaru is the next destination and Patterson says she wants users of the mobile clinic to help them finish off the look of the bus. In Cromwell, the South Today. As floodwaters rise at Nadia Hughes rural property, so too does her desperation for help. The Dalefield resident woke to water lapping against a garage and accommodation unit on her land yesterday morning, following heavy rainfall throughout Sunday. A large pond has formed at the back of the unit, just a few metres from the main house, with other deep streams flowing through the front garden. Queenstown Lakes District Council and Fire Emergency New Zealand have both told her it's not their responsibility. She says it's never flooded like this before, despite many heavy rain events over the past five years. She says a, de she says a development at the neighbouring block has cleared a significant amount of vegetation, which used to soak up rainfall. Hughes says if the council approves a development, then it should be responsible for ensuring drainage is working in the area and nearby properties do not flood a result, as a result of construction. More rain is expected in Queenstown this weekend. Speaking of water in central Otago, a Dunedin filmmaker is using the Blue Lake at St Bathams as the setting for her latest project. Anya Tate Manning has secured backing from the Otago Community Trust to make a black comedy in the central Otago town based loosely on her childhood adventures. Dunedin woman Anya Tate Manning grew up thinking there was a monster in St Bathans Blue Lake when she swam there during childhood holidays. Now the Dunedin director has turned those childhood imaginings into her first short film, a black comedy filmed in and around the central Otago town. I grew up coming to St Bathans as a kid uh, and I, when I used to swim in the lake with my best friend Tessa, we always imagined that there was a monster in the lake because it's so deep and... Uh, it's such a strange place because it's a man-made feature. The film's being funded by the Otago Community Trust as part of the short film Otago Initiative. Producer Maddie Maxwell says the location is perfect for the project. It's a great time of year to be here um, because it's you know just turning into winter. The colours and the look of the place is incredible. Uh, yeah, it's uh, one of the most amazing locations that I can imagine filming at. The film centres around two YouTubers who go searching for monsters in the South Island. It stars New Zealand comedian Chris Parker and actor Olivia Parker, as well as a few local extras. And this slimy co-star called a kraken, made out of kelp and cable ties. And we're going to enter the water and uh, pretend to be the monster, swim around, swim towards the jetty where the actor's going to be and try to get some point of view as a monster swimming towards them. The crew is about 15 strong, including trainees and screen industry professionals. Tate Manning's worked on the project for about a year and a half and says for a long time she's thought St Bathans would be an amazing place to film a movie based on her childhood. A brother and sister who uh, turn up to find the monster and find nothing, uh, but then have a have a surprise at the end. The Blue Lake is Tate Manning's first foray into screen directing. She says it'll be ready for screening in November in St Bathans, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, we check out how the Queen's birthday weekend weather is shaping up, and we travel to Waimati to admire the town's big new art edition. Episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put Some Colour in Your Life, Tuesdays, 7.30. At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent, and where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty, so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. It's on again, the Regent Theatre 24 hour book sale, starting noon 7th of June. Don't miss out. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends, and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes, and more. Shop with us and support your community. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489 2274. 
the season has changed and in our Campbell menswear, in our three stores, Cromwell, South Dunedin and Mosgirl, we have it covered. Check out these jackets, they'll keep you warm and dry and stylish. Of course we're known for our fashion shirts, but in the winter we do have our lovely warm shirts. Look at them all. And we're known for our great range of winter knitwear too. Don't forget our stretch moleskins, six colours. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. We'll keep you warm and dry and looking just great. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Every Kiwi deserves a reliable garage door. Rely on Garador to protect your important stuff. Just like Darren. His Garador keeps his favourite ride in mint condition. We have a huge range at affordable prices. Visit our website for a free consultation. We stand behind every door. Step into Shop on Carol and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. At Green Island Medical Centre, we are committed in caring for our future and present generations. We know as a young person, coming to the doctors can be quite daunting. Our highly skilled doctors and nurses will make your experience one where you will leave with a smile. Your house is very important to us. Shall I make some scones? No my and all, welcome back. This Queen's birthday weekend is set to be a chilly one in the south, with snow expected on Dunedin Hills and inland Otago, as cold blasts hit much of the country. Temperatures are set to plummet by as much as 10 degrees in some parts of New Zealand, as the wintry blast hits. The late autumn storm is due to produce rain and heavy snow to 400 metres, with hail to sea level on Saturday. More on that later in the weather. Transport Waimati has added another huge artwork to the landmark silos. Artist Bill Scott has been commissioned by Transport Waimati to paint the wall of an old flour mill, adding a familiar image of a well-known local woman. Captured in paint as she was in life. This image of the late Stella Chamberlain hanging out the local footy team's jerseys painted by artist Bill Scott, is a record of a lifetime of dedication to the community. Ah, oh, yes, no, it was Stella, Stella Chamberlain, um, wonderful lady who um, passed away recently, but uh, this is an acknowledgement of her um, um, dedication to, to washing the jerseys effectively of the rugby team for many years. The mother of 13 children was made a life member of the Waimate Rugby Club in 2009, just a few years before her passing in 2014. Mother of a large family who you know, supported her children and they all played sport and just her little contribution to the whole thing really is just a wonderful way of saying thank you and you know, acknowledging a wonderful lady who did a lot for, for, for the sport and for the town, really. Scott's painted more murals on the Waimata silos of other prominent locals and says this mural is a great way to remember a lady who was always toiling away helping Waimata. He says painting outdoors in autumn posed a few issues, but he managed. Oh, it went very well. I um, mean, our biggest enemy this time of year was the um, just the coldness of the wall. It's the south wall, so sort of pick our days to, to get a bit of work done, but... Other than that, it went very well, you know, it, it was reasonably close to the ground this time, so <laughs> that was a little easier. So most of it was just done off a ladder, but um, no, it's just gone quite well. Scott says Stella Chamberlain did it the old-fashioned way, soaking the jerseys in her bath and washing them by hand before wringing them out. And did it just because she loved rugby and loved doing it. In Waimate, the South Today. After the break on the South Today. 
Methven music students soar as they're treated to a prestigious in-school concert, and we take a closer look at the weather. Of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put Some Colour in Your Life, Tuesdays, 7.30. It's on again, the Regent Theatre 24 hour book sale, starting noon 7th of June. Don't miss out. Most of us have spots on our skin. That's quite normal. Finding skin cancer as early as possible is key to successful treatment. Book in for a free check of one to two moles or a comprehensive full body check with the Mole Doctor in Waverley. At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent. And where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty, so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Step into Ross Cafe, located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. The Green Island Medical Centre offers everything for your family's needs. Whether you are travelling or coming in to discuss health symptoms, our medical staff provide the best of care. We often manage my health, making booking an appointment or requesting a repeat prescription a breeze. We welcome families like yours. Give us a call today, phone 03 488 2754. season has changed and at Alec Campbell Menswear in our three stores, Cromwell, South Dunedin and Mosgill, we have it covered. Check out these jackets, they'll keep you warm and dry and stylish. Of course we're known for our fashion shirts, but in the winter we do have our lovely warm shirts. Look at them all. And we're known for our great range of winter knitwear too. Don't forget our stretch moleskins, six colours. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. We'll keep you warm and dry and looking just great. Autumn is here and it's too late to sow seed. But don't despair, Ready Lawn is the answer to all your garden woes. Call Ready Lawn today on 027 228 If you're suffering from sciatica, lower back pain, hips and pelvis and knees, this technique will work wonders for you. The energy flow is transmitting through the muscles. Come and see Sunny Chin. Ricky here from Beds R Us Dunedin, your local sleep specialists. Come in and try our huge touchscreen sleep selector, taking the hard work out of choosing the right bed for you. See you here. Thanks for staying with us. Otago Museum has secured exclusive New Zealand rights to host the major exhibition James Cameron Challenging the Deep. The exhibition has been developed by the Australian National Maritime Museum in Sydney in collaboration with the Avatar Alliance Foundation. It takes visitors to the depths of the oceans through the lens of Cameron's underwater cameras and his other technological innovations. Otago Museum is partnering with NIWA to stage the exhibition. It's set to open with a gala event in July. Music students at Mid Canterbury's Mount Hutt College enjoyed some extra tuition recently, courtesy of visiting members of the Royal New Zealand Air Force Band. The band played an afternoon concert at the school in Methven, taking time to chat with aspiring musicians after the show. Personal tuition from those with military precision. 
Young musicians treated to expert coaching from members of the Royal New Zealand Air Force Band at Mount Hutt College recently. Um, three of our um, five chamber music groups uh, work with professional musicians from the Royal New Zealand Air Force Band. So our saxophone trio, our flute trio and our percussion ensemble um, have all had the opportunity to get some specialist guidance. The school's head of music, Matthew Wood, says music is becoming a very popular option at the school, with many pupils taking up instruments. There are up to about 50% of students across years 7, 8 and 9 learning musical instruments now in the school, which is fantastic. And this year, as a result, we've started our first concert band. He's keen to see the trend developing through into the senior school in future years. And so many children are borrowing instruments from the school. They've recently received an $8,000 grant from the New Zealand Community Trust, among other benefactors. Um, so much so that we've been uh, very grateful for the support of a number of organisations and um, helping us keep up with um, the demand for instruments. A fundraising gala performance by the music students is scheduled for August in Methven in order to raise further funds for musical instruments. In Mid Canterbury, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Fiery scenes erupted outside Dunedin's Town Hall this morning as climate action protesters blockaded delegates from entering the Minerals Forum Conference. The Women's Health Bus has held its first clinic in Cromwell after nearly two years of planning, designing, and fundraising. And also in central Otago, a Dunedin filmmaker is using the Blue Lake at St. Bathams as the setting for her latest project. And now look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Barry. Hello Simon. Uh, yes, we have more on the, uh, the climate change protests outside mm -hmm. the, uh, the Mineral Forum conference in Dunedin. Some, as you say, fiery scenes. So we've got great photographic coverage of that as well and, uh, and details of... Uh, of uh, people's reaction to that. Uh, mental health facilities at Waikari Hospital are no longer fit for use and staff are looking at seeking the government to fund a re revamp. So that's a, a fairly significant development up there. Neewa scientists believe Dunedin, Invercargill and Milford Sound are on, uh, on track to post the warmest uh, autumn in record. So, oh. Uh, so again, from following a, a good summer, we're having a pretty good autumn as well, winter to come. So let's see what happens there. Uh, we also have coverage uh, from the DCC's an annual plan hearing, and uh, as we speak, they are still uh, debating the issues. So uh, we'll have uh, all the uh, all the happenings there, um, and uh, something to look at, out for in the ODT tomorrow. A special lift out, lift out publication. Um, celebrating 150 years of the University of Otago, so keep an eye out for that one. Lots to look at, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. Right. Thank very you. Good. Thanks very much, Barry. And time now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Beginning with the southern view, some of the flooding around Queenstown today. Looking at the situation, winter weather is just around the corner with fronts and troughs of low pressure bringing ever colder and more blustery airflows onto southern districts. Snow lining up for the ranges and hills by the end of the week and gale force winds on the coasts too. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport can expect rain and potentially thunderstorms with 16 degrees. Across to the northeast, Nelson and Blenheim are due for rain, but slightly warmer than the west side on 17 degrees. In Canterbury, plan for a grey day and 17 in Kaikoura, clear skies and 18 in Christchurch, while Ashburton is cloudy with 16. Looking at the southern towns, the Catlins, Balclutha, Lumsden and Gore can all expect strong northwesterlies and rain. The Catlins and Balcutha should reach 13, with 12 degrees for Lumsden and Gore. Travelling westward. Travelling westward to the Central Lakes tomorrow is set to feature strong northwesterlies and rain at some point for you all. Alexandria heads for 14, Wanaka is due for 12, while Queenstown and Tiano are due for 11 degrees. Looking to the northern towns, along the coast, Oamaru and Timaru are in for fresh northwesterlies, high clouds and a high of 16 degrees. 
It's pretty similar for Amarama and Twizel, but you're more, more than likely going to have some rain later with your 13 degree high. In Dunedin tonight, fine with moderate westerly winds and an overnight low of 6 degrees. Fine tomorrow with sunny periods at first, but high cloud increasing during the day, and some showers possible in the early evening, looking at a high of 14 and a low of 10. Becoming colder on Thursday with frequent showers and moderate to fresh southwesterly winds, aiming for a high of 12 and a low of 5. Heading to Invercargill, cloudy tonight with strong northwesterlies and an overnight low of 9. Colder tomorrow with periods of rain and strong gusty northwest winds, a high of 13 and a low of 9. Colder on Thursday with heavy showers and much colder strong to gale southwesterlies, looking at a high of 10 degrees and a low of 6. And that's the news this Tuesday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz and follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Enjoy your evening. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.